everybody. Welcome to Conversations That Matter. I'm Sky McFarlane. And I'm Michelle Treese. And um, I'm filling in for Brittany Butler. She wasn't able to make it tonight. She is the preferred other moderator, but <laughs> I can fill in when she's You're not able to come. Great. Well, tonight we have very special guests, and I don't think we'll even need to ask a lot of questions because they have a lot right. of really cool, important history to show us. Um, right in time for Women's History Month. Exactly. So we've got Linda Good and Stacy Farron with us here this evening. We're recording right now. It's March 9th, the day after International Women's Day. Yes. Um, so this is going to be an amazing conversation. So thank you all for being here. Right. We'll probably get two questions in. Yeah, maybe. And that's it. <laughs> you guys you guys check us out. Okay. My first question is, come back with the second question. Tell us who you are. And a little bit about ourselves. So we'll start with Linda first. Uh, thank you, Michelle. And Sky. thank you for having us here tonight mm -hmm. to celebrate uh, Women's History Month. Mm -hmm. Very important, very important. Uh, I'm Linda Good, and uh, I'm a local person. I uh, grew up out in the county, attended ETSU, and uh, graduated from there uh, both times. And uh, just happy to be here. And I'm Stacy White Farron, and I grew up in Johnson City and went to all the Johnson City schools, Northside Elementary, Science Hill High School, and um, found out a wonderful story about my grandmother, Eliza Shout White. And it's wonderful to be here tonight to learn to talk about the history and all she did. So I don't know if this counts as question number two or not, but uh, I am interested before we get into all the history here, how you got involved with um, women's history and the suffragette movement. So whoever wants to start that off. Okay. Well, we'll start. You start. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. um, uh, the suffragists, as they were called in America, suffragettes in England, um, were very important to me, but uh, my attention was drawn to them after uh, the then mayor, Jenny Brock, and I had lunch one day, and uh, it was in uh, early 1919. Uh, 2019. <laughs> I'm really old. <laughs> you are great. Yeah. Good. You are looking good. <laughs> well, I've been talking about 1900s. <laughs> Anyway, it was early 2019, and uh, Jenny happened to say, uh, you know, Linda, um, 2020 is the 100th anniversary of the 19th Amendment being passed, and uh, I'm thinking maybe we should do something about that. So the more we talked, uh, the, the more uh, we figured, well, yeah, that would be a fun thing to do. And I said, we could have a parade. I just want a parade. That's really all I want. So, you know. We had a very short parade, but um, then we said, well, if we're going to have this celebration, we probably need to get some other people involved, and that's when we began talking about who else we wanted to communicate with and get on, on the bandwagon with us, and of course, we came up with Joy Fulkerson, uh, who was the co-chair of the coalition with me, and Rebecca Prophet, the uh, curator and director, now director of Reese Museum. And then from there, it just kind of spread out. So that's how I got involved in this. Does that answer the question? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, then um, I got a phone call from Tom Roberts, who they had asked to research and help them with the coalition. And um, just out of the blue, he called and said, are you a living descendant of Eliza Shout White? And I said, yes, yeah, she's my grandmother. And um, I was 22 when my father passed, so I didn't really learn the history, and both my grandmother and uh, grandfather were deceased. And he said, I've got an amazing story to tell you, all that your grandmother did. Um, and when I found out, because I didn't know her, it was truly amazing. She was such an... Um, a pioneer and a trailblazer for Johnson City and um, I have 
things. Do you want me to tell them now or yeah. just go back? Okay. Yeah. She was a civic leader and suffragist, and uh, she was born in 1883 and passed in 1965. And we had just moved back to Johnson City and uh, from Germany. My dad was in the military, and that's why I didn't know her. Um, when we moved back, she would passed the next year. But and then my dad passed away when I was 22, so he I didn't hear this history of her. But she was the Tennessee State Chair, Congressional Union for Women's Suffrage in 1916, the National Women's Party, 1916 to 1920, First District Chair, 1917, 1919, and 1920. She was one of the first women to vote in Johnson City, and she was present in Nashville when the decisive vote was made giving women the right to vote. And um, they honored her recently on um, 611 um, East Holston Avenue. I'm going to make sure I said it right. 611. And there's a national trail marker there. And um, I'd love everyone to go by and see it. And it it's amazing. It has all this information on it. And it's honoring her. And it's at her former home that she lived in. Mm -hmm. And to learn this history of a grandmother I never knew anything about is truly amazing and wonderful. She was a trailblazer for Johnson City and the suffragists. Yeah, yeah. she was. This is the horse she rode yes. in the parade that they organized in Johnson City in 1916, in October, to rally people around the right to vote for women. That's and then they did the mural. Yeah. Yeah. On Ash Street, they uh, and you can tell about okay. all yeah, the mural. Yeah, we know you've got a whole explanation yes. of all this stuff, so whenever you want to go into it, okay. we're ready to hear and learn. Can I ask a quick question? Please. So did you ever go into the house on... Oh, yes. <coughs> As a kid, yes. you were going mm -hmm. up? I, I grew up in that neighborhood. We, wow. as a child, you know, we played kick the can in all the yards and, <laughs> and I would go in the home um, and it was just and I knew it was my grandparents but they lost that home back in uh, the Great Depression mm -hmm. so but I knew of the home and I'd been in it as a child and it's beautiful you just need to go by and see the trail marker it's truly yeah. a beautiful home now I was part of this that committee doing this mm -hmm. and I remember I still tear up when mm -hmm. I hear this story but I remember when you found out about that, and we met at, at the Willow Tree. That's home. right, right. And I remember you said that you had heard about your grandfather. Yes, he was one of the founding fathers of the John City Country Club. <laughs> but I never knew her history. Yeah, I thought that was very interesting. Baby. She's amazing. Way more amazing than your grandfather. Oh, yes. <laughs> Yeah. Amazing. She fought for the right yeah. for us to vote. Back then, women couldn't own land. They couldn't vote. You, you think of that. And, yeah. you know, she rode horseback to lead the parade. It's truly, she was a trailblazer. And I think about Tennessee history. Mm -hmm. And I know you never learned that, Tennessee history. Mm -hmm. I know no. you never because you didn't know anything about it. No. So to know that all of that information has just been sitting there, Right. And Tom, who is amazing in himself, just, right. yes. you can you can say, Tom, I need some info on Cheetos. Boom. He's got it. <laughs> he's amazing. He can tell you the history, the where the first mm -hmm. guy, he's, he's got it. Mm -hmm. And for him to be able to find that information in such a short amount of time oh. that has been sitting there. Yeah. And that you, I, no one's ever been taught that about this woman. No. Who lived right here in Johnson, Johnson City. City. Every, Every history class in, in Johnson City should have mm -hmm. that involved. Oh, there's it's no amazing. doubt about it. Mm -hmm. It's a local history. That yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what and, was you know, Tom's name again? Tom oh. Roberts. And, and uh, Rebecca Prophet at the Reese actually found Tom. Uh, she may have known him before, but she found him because we said, you know, what are the, what are the uh, elements that we need to put this together? And we said, well, we need a historian, you yeah. know. And he we was did. living in Florida. <clears throat> and he was in Florida. And he's now living here. From mm -hmm. Florida. Yeah. And he's now in Johnson City. Or yeah. Well, and if they yes. never decided to do this, 
you might have never known this history no. about your own family. I exactly. wouldn't have. That's no. incredible. Because my father passed it. Such a, you know, I was 22. Yeah. yeah. So I'm sure you shared this with other family members. Oh, yes. What are they saying? Are they like just how I was? My yes. mouth was hanging open. Yes. <laughs> My brother was with us at the marker uh, marker when we, you know, revealed it. To, and it was it was just amazing. I mean, amazing. It was to learn it. We never knew anything about our grandmother. Wow. What about that? Well, Wonderful it, story. <laughs> I mean, just to add a little bit more about how important she was. Is, yeah. I mean, you've probably heard of Alice Paul. I mean, a lot of people have heard of Alice Paul. I'll talk about her in a minute because uh, she's on the mural, actually. Um, she was the Congressional Union president. I mean, a very important position. Underneath her was Sue Shelton White. She's on the mural as well. Uh, as the national organizer, um, and Alice Paul did a lot of fundraising, then in each state, I mean, they were very well organized, which is... You know, there's lots of lessons to learn about organization here. Uh, in each state, there was a Congressional Union Party state chair. And so they would come together and, you know, go back to their respective states and, you know, just like you like the chart, you know, just like the chart would happen. Well, um, Mary Eliza Shout White was the Tennessee state chair. Mm -hmm. So that's why she got to be there in Nashville when the amendment was passed. And that's, I mean, she did, led the parade. She organized the parade. Um, crucial, crucial person in the whole thing for us. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah, that's it's amazing. amazing. Yeah. So do you have siblings? Um, I have, um, there was five okay. of us, but there's three. I have a brother out in the state of Washington, Scott White, and then my brother John White mm -hmm. lives in uh, Churchill. And then we live in Gray. And mm -hmm. they do nothing about this? No. No. Wow. Isn't it? I know. <laughs> Dad passed, you know, while we yeah. were so young. Yeah. And it just was never handed down. And so... I'm sure that you guys probably have the big family Bible that's every generation. Yeah. Anything in that about no. it? No word no. whatsoever. Even when you go back and think, okay, there's. No. Yeah, that is just incredible. See, and that, I mean, that is. Tom Roberts showed yeah. pictures and amazing. And this is her picture. Um, this is Eliza. And he, oh, gosh, I see the stimulus. Yeah, it was just amazing everything he found out that I didn't know about my own grandmother. But it's it's an amazing story. Do you do you think maybe they were like, oh, it wasn't a big deal? I don't know. Well, I think I think I can pitch in here on this. I think it's like other notable women. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do we know about it? You know, yeah. it's not in the history books. We don't. We aren't taught about it. It's you know, it's the men we're talking about, mostly the white men mm -hmm. that we learn about um, in history classes and so forth. Not a lot. Of, and you know, unless you take a gender studies class or something, you may not. Uh, you may miss all this. Mm -hmm. Not only her, yeah, but right. a lot of others. Mm -hmm. Right. And and I do. I think. You know. Gosh, I hate. I don't want to get into the ugliness of it, but I just do think that we're living so much out of history, and I know people of color are really feeling that. Yes. But I'm sitting here looking at you, who I, a white woman, who has also missed out on that, mm -hmm. and it shows you that minorities and women just mm -hmm. it's not enough. It's, it's not, not enough what you do mm -hmm. to be That's right. taught. Yeah. And. That has to change. Oh my goodness. I know. And we'll talk about the uh, African American women who were a huge part of this and ended up not getting the vote at the same time that the white women got the vote, you know, mm -hmm. so much, much later. Mm -hmm. So, or even it, at the same time, black men got the vote, mm -hmm. you know, in, in the 15th right. Amendment. So, <clears throat> yeah, sad. Yeah. So tell us about the poster here, and then I also okay. want to hear about the artist. Okay, but yeah, I'll include that. Yeah. Tell because uh, Rebecca Prophet actually found Ellen, as well as finding Tom Amazing. Roberts. Ellen Elms is the artist. 
she and her husband Don actually created this and it was during COVID that this all was created, you know, so a lot of what she did was done in her home because it's on panels. I mean, if you, if you can't even tell it, yeah. but it's not painted on the wall. It's on panels that are basically adhered to the wall for the most part. Some parts of it are painted, but uh, she had done a lot of work about, uh, she had done some research on Seneca Falls, the 1848 convention. And uh, she was into the history and getting her and Tom Roberts together is like, you know, education personified. Mm -hmm. um, but um, so she actually did, Ellen actually did this, and she's done others that are minority driven and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, voting rights and that sort of thing driven. But uh, do you want me to tell you a little about the mural? Yes. Okay. All right, this is the mural, as, as uh, Stacy said, it's on Ash Street. It's right across from the old courthouse that's being uh, redone, re reconstructed. And uh, I mean, it's a mess down there right now because of all the Walnut Street uh, renovation. But I'm gonna start here on uh, the left and talk about, this. Is, these are considered like the mothers of the f suffrage uh, drive uh, in, in America. And the first one up here on top is Matilda Jocelyn Gage. She uh, was known for challenging uh, politics to get them not to include religion in it, basically. So, I mean, there's some early, and she was born in 1826, okay? So, you know, those things were being seen at that time that there might be, you know, a little bit more religion in politics than we'd, than we'd like to have to be in the democracy with the separation of church and state. And uh, so here is Lucy Stone, right here, uh, below her, to her left. Lucy was uh, a forward thinker. She was one of the first women who decided she was not gonna take her husband's name when they got married. Uh, she kept her maiden name. And she actually split, Lucy did, with a couple of the others here that I'll go into over the, the awarding of the 15th Amendment uh, because they were saying, well, wait a minute, black men should not get the right to vote before we white women do. And Lucy was saying, uh-uh, no, let's give the black men, let's give whoever we can the vote and then we can work on ourselves. So there was this big split uh, in the organizations then uh, along lines of color, uh, quite honestly. So uh, here is, uh, right below her is Sojourner Truth. Now many of, of everybody, you know, may have heard about Sojourner Truth. Uh, she gave the famous Ain't I a Woman speech at Seneca Falls, or no, I think it was someplace else. But anyway, that was her speech. Um, and uh, the interesting thing about Sojourner, she was much older uh, than the rest of the uh, leaders in the suffrage movement. Uh, she was invited to the White House by Abraham Lincoln in 1864. And while she was there, she stepped on a streetcar that was full of whites, and they tried to make her get off, and she wouldn't get off. So we think that Rosa Parks was the first. Oh, no. It was Sojourner Truth. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She said, no, I'm not getting off. And she stayed on. Until my stop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And she was also the first woman uh, that we know of, uh, first woman of color, who sued a white man and won. Mm. She sued her previous owner for her son, mm. and she actually won. Wow. Mm. Yeah, that. yeah, she, she mm. actually won. So, mm. you know, these talk about courage and chutzpah, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So over here is uh, Elizabeth Cady St Stanton, Let's see where she is, right here. Uh, Elizabeth Cady Stanton uh, met this woman right here, Lucretia Mott, when they were at an abolitionist uh, convention, international, in London. And um, Lucretia Mott was a Quaker minister, and Lucretia was about 25 years older than uh, Elizabeth Cady Stanton. And um, they were, but they were together at this abolitionist con convention with their husbands, they were, you know, a lot of these women were abolitionists to first. And um, so when it came time for the convention to vote on things, 
uh, they were asked to leave, go into a separate room, and like a black curtain was drawn over so that they could not vote at the convention. And it, uh, I can't say a bad word, <laughs> teed them off. <laughs> They were so upset, they left the convention, walked around the streets of London and said, you know, we need to do something. And that was the genesis of the 1848 Seneca Falls Convention. Mm -hmm. That happened in 1840. So they said, this is not right. We should be able to, we have worked just as hard as our husbands for abolition, and we should be able to vote on what this convention does, but they couldn't. So they, they started working on women's rights, okay? Starting with the right to vote. So that's uh, Lucretia Mott and Elizabeth Cady Stanton. In between them is one we all know, is Susan B. Anthony, right? Mm -hmm. Now this is all on the mural that you can go see, and the, in the kiosk that is in front of the mural, all this information is there. So um, don't try to remember. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, Carrie mm -hmm. Chapman Cat, where is Cherry? Right here she is, okay? She's there with her arms all raised up because she was invited uh, to, this is Governor uh, Roberts of the state of Tennessee. So when the amendment actually was ratified by Tennessee, which was the final state to ratify it, and the necessary one because there needed to be 36 so uh, at that time um, for two-thirds. And, um, and so she was there. Well, that's why she has her hand up in the air. Below her is Alice Paul, uh, and if I guess if you had to ask me which of these women is your hero, it would be Alice Paul. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm a hero of hers because of the courage she had to do what she did. I'm not necessarily one who would have done what she did. Uh, she was responsible for the Sentinels standing in front of the White House when Woodrow Wilson was there and they burned him in effigy. I mean, it was, you know, during the war and they were saying, how can you go fight for democracy in another country when you can't even give us the democracy we, we need? Very militant woman, okay? They were the ones that also got thrown in jail, uh, the workhouse at Aquacon. And listen, if you want to know more about that, Get this movie. Uh, Hilary Swank it plays Alice Paul. It will really make you appreciate it. And it's very true fictional. It's not fiction. It's it's very true as to what happened. And it's and called is, yeah. Iron Jawed Angels is the name of it. And Hilary uh, Swank plays, <clears throat> plays Alice Paul. <clears throat> she... Uh, she learned her militant ways because she was actually in England... You know, as you know, the women got the vote in England before uh, we got the vote here. She was there in, in England and learned and became friends with the uh, Pankhurst women, uh, the mother and daughter uh, Pankhurst. And they, um, they were responsible for bombing Parliament. I mean, talk about militant. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you think about it, there have been uh, movements since then that there was a militant arm, and there was a more moderate arm. And, you know, you go back and ask, well, which one got things done? Both of them together, mm -hmm. you know, but apart, got things done, right? And the, the notice that Alice Paul and those women that burned Woodrow Wilson and effigy and stood in front of the White House <clears throat> in the cold and got sent to prison, and yeah, they, they, they were very helpful. But... The one that got invited to the president's office when the amendment was finally put into law was Carrie Chapman Cat. Because they burned him in effigies. <laughs> <laughs> so he was not going to invite Alice Paul. No. no. <laughs> so, you know, I, just, I don't think so. Somebody's burned. I'm not going to have them to dinner. <laughs> yeah, so. Yeah, so uh, Carrie Chapman Cat, very effective, but much more moderate. Uh, than Alice Paul. And Carrie Chapman Catt was the National uh, American Women's Association. That was her organization. <clears throat> and Alice's was the Congressional Union Party. Okay, uh, obviously this, the mural is showing, it's called Passing the Torch. Mm -hmm. And so there's a torch here and the, the original women are passing the torch to Alice Paul, okay, 
And from the 1920 19th Amendment then, uh, the next one that actually gave some voting rights, and that's what this is really all about, was, uh, <clears throat> was Asians. At that time, you know, up in, uh, let's see, I, the year is on here. I can't see it. Can you see it, Stacy? 19, what, what's the year up there for? 52. Mm -hmm. oh. Yes, 52. Yes, you can see it. 52. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, that is when the act was, uh, the McCarran uh, Act was passed for Asians to have full citizenship and the right to vote. 1952. Okay. And... Uh, Believe it or not, the next one was original Americans, Native Americans. In 1957. Would, did not have, that, that, there was an act passed in 1924 to recognize them as citizens, but it didn't give them specifically the right to vote. So the, uh, the Utah franchise in 1957, 57. yeah, 57, um, <clears throat> gave them the right to vote. That, that is just mind-boggling to me, that people who lived here to begin with could not vote until 1957. Just amazing. I mean, you know, in our lifetimes, right? So, uh, okay, then that torch was passed uh, to, uh, that's Zitkala Scott, Sky. Uh, a Native American woman who was very active, not only in voting rights, but in education for, for American Indians. And uh, <clears throat> so the torch then passed to the Voting Rights Act. You know, you say, well, women got the vote, vote in, you know, 1920. Well, you know, the Jim Crow laws, all of those black women did not really have have the full rights to vote until 1954, 64, 65, 1965, uh, when the Voting Rights Act uh, was passed. So um, you think about this, and, and depicted there is Ida, Ida B. Wells. It, one little thing I want to tell you about Ida B. Wells, uh, who is African American, at 18 years old, she was riding a train, now, I don't know if she even knew about Sojourner Truth, probably did. Mm -hmm. She was riding a train and had bought a first class ticket. And the conductor came out and said, back up to first class and said, You can't sit here. And uh, she ended up biting his finger <laughs> and was thrown off the train. <laughs> he probably had it in her face. <laughs> <laughs> he probably did. She bit his finger. I love it. Well, I think the, the history says she bit his hand, but I, I like the story that she bit his finger. I'm sorry, Scott. What you... I'm just saying she said, I'm not leaving without a bite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, without a, I'm not leaving without a bite. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so she, but she was, uh, she eventually stayed on the train, you know, so uh, she won that one. But she is also... Um, also, just oh, she is also the one, and it's depicted in that movie, uh, Iron Jawed Angels. Mm -hmm. She's the one, and you may have heard about this, that uh, snuck in. You know, Alice Paul said, No, we're not having black women march with us in Washington, D.C. in 1913. And Ida B. Wells snuck in to the Illinois delegation with the white women, okay? Mm -hmm. And she was asked to leave. And she said, either I will march with you or I don't march at all. Yeah. And she mm -hmm. stayed with them. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she had other women, white women from the Illinois delegation come and stay by her side, sort of surround her so that mm -hmm. she wouldn't get thrown out. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, just so much, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Fearless. Uh, fearlessness, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. It's, and mm -hmm. so it's, it's really, really... I think wonderful. A great story. A great story. Good history. Yeah, it is. <clears throat> now, she also, um, yeah, yeah, she won a lawsuit about this, uh, why, you know, sitting in the first class seat because she had a ticket. She won a lawsuit, and then the Tennessee Supreme Court overturned it. Mm. Yeah, they overturned it. How that, you know, there's more history there that I, that right. I don't know, but they overturned it um, in 1884. So um, <clears throat> the torch gets passed. Now up here, this is more state of Tennessee stuff, okay? Mm -hmm. This is uh, Frankie Pierce, an African-American woman, who was invited to uh, the suffragist uh, activities by Catherine Kenney, who is also here, okay? Um, 
And uh, she was one of the beginning, fa the founders of the League of Women Voters. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, uh, Frankie Pierce and Catherine Kenny. So, and the League of Women Voters actually came out of this whole movement. And we do have a good chapter here of the League of Women Voters, so join. <laughs> um, okay, Catherine Kenny. Uh, and you know, you notice the colors. You know, I wanted to tell you about the colors. The colors they didn't pick until 1908, and here's what they represent. The purple represents the royal blood that flows in the veins of every suffragist. That's what they said, okay? And white was the purity of their cause, and yellow is the, or, or gold um, was the life and light that they were shedding for future generations. So most everything had, uh, had symbolism. You know, there was some symbolism there. Uh, and if we have enough time later, much later, um, <clears throat> we can talk about the ERA coming on this. Alice Paul actually wrote the ERA amendment, uh, which has, uh, you know, been languishing in Congress for decades. We can talk about that uh, later, but that's an important part of, of uh, women's rights as well. So um, that's Tennessee. And there's a wonderful book about how this all happened in Tennessee, which is absolutely a story in itself, called The Woman's Hour by Elaine Weiss. And it uh, is absolutely true, but reads like a novel. Mm. And it talks about the timing. It talks about all the shenanigans that went on, you know, during that, I think it was like eight days of uh, the session in the legislature in Nashville in August, I mean, it's really hot there and not a lot of air conditioning and, and how they all, all of these, <laughs> all of these women um, descended into then uh, the, the center, the train, on the train, you know, in, in Nashville. The stories are amazing. I mean, and, and uh, Elaine Weiss has done a great job getting the research done and telling the story of it. It's really, really a good book. I highly recommend it. It's a great book club book for Women's History Month. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, that's really good. So, um, uh, we can talk about how the coalition came together uh, as well. I don't need to be taking all of the That's all, right. all of the time. You're fine. Yeah, this yeah. is good stuff. Yeah. So um, after Jenny and I spent that day together, and we got Joy Fulkerson, who became the co-leader with me, and um, Rebecca Prophet and Tom uh, Roberts, um, and I'm probably leaving a whole bunch of. We had about. Do you, do you remember the meetings, Michelle? Is it 20, 25? I had about 20, 25 folks. Yeah, folks were there. And uh, some young women, too. Some uh, women that were lawyers and descendants of some of these Johnson City women. Mm -hmm. um, and um, we decided, okay, well, we are, we are, we're going to do it. We're going to raise enough money to do this mural. And so <laughs> um, the... Coalition put the uh, fundraiser together at Willow Tree, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I I think talk about fun. Mm -hmm. That that vi votes and vibes was the name yeah. of it. Yeah, <laughs> it votes and vibes, and we had music and poetry and drumming. You know, the uh, yeah. women a women's group of drummers came over from Asheville and and did drumming for us. It was absolutely fabulous, mm -hmm. and um, then. We still didn't have enough money, right? So uh, we did that Vibes and Votes the week before the COVID lockdown mm -hmm. was announced. Oh, wow. Yeah. I didn't catch that. I mean, yeah, was it was the, the week before COVID, COVID yeah. lockdown happened. Mm -hmm. It was yeah. in February. Mm -hmm. And uh, we thought, well... We're not going to go anywhere with this. We've got a little bit of money from vibes and votes. We've got, a, you know, this is going to cost, you know, more. So, um, <clears throat> so suddenly Nancy Fishman uh, comes to me and says, um, I, I may have a, a source of some funding. Uh, 
and come to find out, she was on the pu- Public Art Commission, which, mm. you know, was part of the funding as well. Yeah. Uh, and we knew we had them as well. But she said, that I, there's, there's more money to be found. And let me introduce you to somebody. And uh, I said, okay, well. So I thought, you know, <laughs> we're going to get a couple thousand dollars. You know, it's going to, yeah, okay. So Nancy uh, has me meet some women uh, from Bravissima. Women Sponsoring the Arts. Uh, Belinda Keener is the uh, executive director of that. It's a uh, 501c3. We had lunch down at Main Street Cafe. You know, it's like you read this history and it's over tea and and cookies and over lunches and that sort of thing that most of this happened, right? But (laughs) yes, we were just doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. (laughs) We had lunch at Main Street Cafe in Jonesboro and I'm presented with a ten thousand dollar check, and that this just is a local group. This is a local group. This is a local group of yeah. <laughs> yes, you do. You need to have them on. Yeah, yeah. Belinda Keener uh, is okay. yeah, and um, man, uh, that made it. That made our fundraising yeah. goal. That 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 did it. So we said, Ellen, go for it. You know, and we went through quite a few hoops. We went wall shopping. <laughs> wall, are we going to put this on? We wall shopped. And we finally found a, a good wall, and we thought, oh, good, this is, this, is even, this is wonderful. And Jenny happened to mention to me, Linda, you better check to see if this is in the historic district or not, because if it is, you're going to have to jump through some hoops there. And you know what? She said that. She sent me an email about it, and it was one of those things that just slipped right through. Mm-hmm. So things happen like that. You know, it's like we were doing so much, it slipped. And so when the mural got done, okay, all of a sudden I get a call uh-huh. from the head of the historic com- <laughs> commission. What can you say? I mean, it was one of those instances where you say, well, better to say, uh, well, I'm sorry, I did that, rather than saying, give me permission to do that and not getting it, right? <laughs> so it is in the historic district. The, the historic district line is right on that street, right in front of that street. Oh. And so it's, it, yeah, it is. And But they looked at it, quite honestly, after the fact and said, we love this. This is yeah. about history. Mm-hmm. It's It fits in with the building and the neighborhood, and yeah. it's all good. So I think we would have got permission in the long run, but it was one hoop we didn't have to jump through. Yeah, so... Um, it's not right on the brick. No, well, it's not. Some of the painting is. Yeah. But no. Yeah. I Don't that say that because somebody will try to tear it down. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> It's just a, it's a fantastic it's very attached. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it is. It is very attached to the building. It yeah. won't come off. Yeah, it won't come. Off. And we've asked Ellen, you know, well, how long will this last? And she looked at us and said, "Up oh, forever." <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, I didn't talk a lot about what's being passed here. This is uh, to other other women primarily who need more rights. Okay, there's some. There's a disabled woman there who happens to be the I think it's like the sister-in-law of Ellen. That's mm-hmm. Ellen's sister-in-law, mm-hmm. uh, who is deceased. Oh, There's wow. a the Selma March is right up here. Uh, it's just all about rights. Yeah. It's just really all about rights, it, and it's beautiful. I mean, it is a beautiful mural. Mm-hmm. So I suggest, especially after a lot of that work gets done in the Walnut mm-hmm. Street corridor, that right. people go down there. I mean, it'd be a great place for for. Um, teachers, you know, to bring their students. Mm-hmm. If and I don't know what their plans are with that. They're doing a lot of work down there. Yeah. But if it ends up being cafe or restaurants or something, it, this mural is in the perfect place. It's in the perfect place. place. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, we, and we little perfect did we place. know, we did not mm-hmm. know when this went up that there was going to be that development. Mm-hmm. Or I didn't. You know, maybe Jenny yeah. did because she's on the <laughs> she's <a> mayor, but, <laughs> uh, but I did not know. Uh, so we just, we lucked out. Yeah. We absolutely yeah. lucked out. Yeah. So, 
Stacey, I don't know, in school, did, did you love history? Was that one of your favorite things? Oh, yes, yes. And so, obviously, all of this is, like, fantastic Just education. amazing, yes. Yeah. And to see that, you know, and we reenacted the parade, and originally we were going to try. Yes. I was going to try to get a horse and ride. She led the parade uh -huh. on a horse, and we were going to try to do that. But then it was COVID. COVID. Right. And Rain. lockdown yeah. and no horses allowed. <clears throat> Yeah. yeah, but somebody from my church said if I did get on the horse, they were going to do a slingshot, and I'd probably been ten counties away when it finished. <laughs> they, always, they said, "Yeah, you get on that horse." <laughs> but we had the parade and the rain, and it was just fabulous. Yeah, yeah it was wonderful. It we, was well. It was it was, it was a short mile an hour winds that day. It was, it was. It was windy. And this was the day that we commemorated the, the mural and presented mm -hmm. it to the community mm -hmm. uh, and to Mayor Brock. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, one thing I didn't mention was this is Feb Byrne, um, and she was the mother of the senator in Tennessee who changed his vote. You know, this thing won by one vote, was ratified in Tennessee by one vote. Mm -hmm. And he had, he had been against suffrage up until he got a letter from his mother and and is that what that picture is? Yes. That's what that picture is. That's that comes from the letter. Can you talk a little bit about that letter? Oh my gosh. Well, <laughs> you know, she was she was uh Feb Byrne, I think she lived in like McMinnville or yeah, I think it was McMahon, McMahon County. And um very educated, you know, um, but couldn't vote and she just didn't like that. So when she got her son into being a senator, the youngest senator in the legislature, uh, 22 years old. Mm -hmm. So she she writes him a letter at the last minute. She's, it's looking like this is not going to happen. And this is all in the woman's hour in this book. Um, uh, she writes this letter to him, and he gets it the morning of the final vote. Wow. And basically it says something like, it's on here. Can you read that, Michelle? Can you read what it says? I had to put my reading glasses on. Can you read it, too? Dear son, yeah. hurry and vote for suffrage. Don't forget to be a good boy. Lots of love, <laughs> Mama. <laughs> yeah, and part of the letter said something about, um, you know, Carrie Chapman Cat was there from the NAWSA and um, who's Alice Paul's counterpart, you know, on those two organizations. And uh, so her last name was Cat, right? And there was some funny thing that Feb Byrne wrote in the letter about help help, help Miss Cat catch the cats, mm -hmm. you know. Catch you. Yeah. <laughs> the, yeah, it was, it was something else she said, but yeah. So that letter, <laughs> yeah, and he changed the history of this thing because if if this hadn't ratified in Tennessee, um, it would have been a long time. That'd be a great movie. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I know. I want to watch it. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. in this book. Yeah, yeah. It is. It is. Oh, it is. It's fun history, and we had fun in the coalition. I mean, the coalition was a lot of fun. We we uh, we, dress wore, up, we dressed the, up. Here's the, here's my tie. hat yeah. from the coalition, you know, with the white on and all that. Mm -hmm. And the day we um, did, did you make that? Oh that? gosh, no! I bought this on uh, Etsy. Oh, cool. Actually, yeah, That's great. yeah. yeah. Um, and um, the day that we commemorated it and gave it to the community was in November of twenty. It was the, the, right before the election. Is it 21? Well, the election would have been 20. 22? 2. 26, 24. Anyway, it was right before the, the uh, big election, the general election. Mm -hmm. And so it was perfect timing for us to have that emphasis on vote, you know, mm -hmm. to get out and vote. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was so windy that day. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and we knew we couldn't have a big long parade, so we we marched from where I think that Tennessee Hills Distillery mm -hmm. um, is now 
to down to the mural on Ash Street, which is what three blocks. <laughs> yeah, holding our hats. Holding our hats. You know, get, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but and there was a Knoxville uh, public television uh, station there oh, cool. and took some footage. So there's there's yeah. All of this that I'm telling you is either on the kiosk in front of the mural or our website is still up. Oh, okay. JCTNSuffrage.org. And uh, Shirley, thank you, Shirley, for keeping this uh, website up and going. Shirley Payne has done the website for us. And she said, in fact, that if she, as soon as she got the link to this recording, she put it up on the website oh, as perfect. well. Yeah. Great. So, yeah. Yeah, so um, I, it's amazing how all of this came together so yeah. nicely. Mm-hmm. I mean, it just came together like it was mm-hmm. supposed to happen. Yeah, it really did. Now there's really amazing. amazing. Isn't there something in Knoxville like a, I remember there was a oh. with some other there's, things that fallen up. There's there is uh, statues. There are two big bronze statues. Yeah. Sue Shelton White, Mary Crozer French. We didn't. Uh, French. We didn't talk about the John City women either. Um, uh, in their, you know, holding up their banners and uh, like this, flags. yeah, and the flag and all that. Show them your right banner. On, uh, right your on, banner over there. Uh, yeah, right on uh, Market Street, mm-hmm. okay. on in uh, in Knoxville. In Knoxville. Mm-hmm. Plus, two, two, one block down, um, is a statue of Feb Byrne and, and Harry Byrne, her standing on you know behind him on the shoulder uh, you know with his her hand on his shoulder <laughs> yeah so there's that statue there uh, so and they're they're actually working on funding a women's suffrage museum oh, cool. in Knoxville oh, yes wow. they have the traveling one now don't they because it was in it was Jonesboro it was but that's not associated with the one in Knoxville the oh. one in Knoxville is going to be like a permanent like, museum yes. you know okay. with all of this history in in there because Tennessee was so important and Upper East Tennessee was so important in this. They had the traveling one down in Nashville. My son lives in Nashville. And he went and saw it, and it blew him away. He said, that's yeah. my great-grandmother. Yeah, exactly. It, I mean, it was amazing just yeah. to, if you ever have a chance to see the. And it's in the Tennessee State Library. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, I went down there to see it. I, I would imagine mm-hmm. it's still there. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, yes, they it's traveled it and brought it to the Jonesboro uh, Visitor Center. Center. Mm-hmm. No, it was, I, I yeah. don't think I knew that. Yeah. Did you oh, know? it it was wonderful. The I, and I don't remember when that was. And but your it grandmother was, is in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Johnson City's yeah. in it. Yeah, all her. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. They had, uh, they had a convention meeting. Um, here on Spring Street, I think it was 1916, um, where just right, you know, where Label is. It was just right across from there. It used to be that bar where Peanut was. Do you remember Peanut? Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that was the building. That was the building they had the... the uh, What's that? Yeah. <laughs> well, the bar wasn't there then. <laughs> Uh, don't get me wrong here. Um, <laughs> the Mecca, that was the name of that bar. Yeah, the yeah. Yeah, it was there, but it's not there any longer. But it wasn't there in 1916 when the convention met there. So. Yeah, yeah. But we, we're we pretty sure, and Tom uh, Tom uh, Roberts did not find this specifically, but we, we think surely. We know that the parade in 1916 started up at where the... Um, Town View, that senior living center is now, that used to be Memorial Hospital. I was born there. Mm-hmm. And uh, it went all the way downtown around Fountain Square, right. around the fountain mm-hmm. there. And um, we're pretty sure that Mary Nelson Mary- Merriweather, I don't think she's on here, uh, who was really active in Knoxville, who is on the statue that I mentioned in Morgan Street, uh, she spoke you know, on behalf of... And the, they had hundreds in that parade. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, I know. 1916. They well, said a lot is, of the yeah the veterans yeah. Uh, yeah, was from the VA got days. involved. Tell us about the bottom part of this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Was the parade. Go with the bottom there, yeah. uh, Stacy. Some of those Johnson City women. Yeah. Well, you talk about them. You know more than... <laughs> I just know about my grandmother. <laughs> Will you tell us about the bigger picture behind the mural picture there? 
Well, this is part of the mural. It's if you'll look at it there. This is how she looked riding her horse to lead the parade in 1916 downtown Johnson City. Now, Tom got this from a photograph that I found. You found. I found oh, of yeah. her. I guess where and they lived. Personal belongings. Mm -hmm. Where they lived in Johnson City. Yeah. Um, she. It must have been a lot of land. She rode horses. And, Did she yeah. have that crown on? Well, we don't, I, I don't know, but I know she. Yeah, I um, love it. Yeah, don't she know. just led the parade. Like no, <laughs> no, she's like, Sorry. I'll honor her. I love it. <laughs> but yeah. she, yeah, led the parade 1916 on horseback. But this, really this is her. That's yeah. yeah. amazing. Mm -hmm. And that is her. That's a great picture of hers. Did you find that picture? Or is uh, it, did Tom come up with that? We, I think I had it, and then, had it. yeah. Okay. Do you have family members that resemble you? You resemble her. Oh yeah. Her. Do you have other family members that could say? That no, was... I, I have, I had four brothers. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no, it's such a wonderful history to learn. It she is. was an amazing trailblazer. She was. Exactly. But, but the Johnson City Parade in, in 1916, uh, that had the, at then, the Mountain Home uh, Drum and Fife Band. Mm -hmm. Some of it, would, some of them were in cars. Uh, Tom found this out, but some of them were in cars. And here were some of the leading Johnson City uh, activists, okay? One was, this woman right here is Margaret Hayes Powell, whose son was the governor of, of no, I'm sorry, the mayor of Nashville, and her uh, other son was, I think, a senator uh, in Nashville, and they still may be there. I don't know. I haven't uh, checked into that lately. But um, Lula Bell and Paul Devine are here in the car. There was a guy, that, you know, in the car with uh, his wife. And um, I don't know if you're old enough to remember uh, Harris Manufacturing here in Johnson City. Uh, was a big, big company, uh, and the Harris's, uh, Ida Florence Potter Harris is depicted here as well, mm -hmm. and uh, they were very instrumental on, uh, uh, you know, building industry in Johnson City, and they were active as well. Uh, and there's a picture um, in the QR code for the kiosk, mm -hmm of um, some of these other women and their names, and uh, they, they seemed to be good buds with Elisa. You know, they, they were, it was like, you know, yeah, we're sisters together, we're gonna, we're gonna do this, you know. Yeah. But on the mural too, uh, African-American woman named Bertha Ellis is here. Now she is, we don't know of her being involved in the suffrage movement, but there is a community center over on Chilhowee that's named after her. Mm -hmm. So Ellen included her because she's mm -hmm. such a leader in the yes. community. Mm -hmm. And we, we wanted this to be a very inclusive mural. Mm -hmm. so and I remember the, the day that it was presented, uh -huh. uh, there were uh, young folks. Yes. There in from that. the Girls Club. Mm -hmm. From the Girls Club, that's mm -hmm. right. That's right. And they uh, participated in the parade. Right, participated mm -hmm. in the parade. Did. And they each had something to say Mm -hmm. About like each one of the women, key women. I know they there was, did. There was a woman. Uh, Very good memory. I know. Yes. That's, I love kids mm -hmm. being involved yeah. in things mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. But, uh, that yeah. Was, they they, uh, they did, did. They talk about the John. I was trying to remember. If they, they, they talked they, about the John. They John actually talked about specific people. people. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that were in the mural. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. they did. And and uh, I think in fact. They introduced themselves as, I think one of them said, I'm Sue Shelton White, Aww. and I'm from Knoxville, and I did this, and I did that, you know, yeah. Is there a recording of that? Yes. It's on that Knoxville TV station uh, Is it recording. Good? You know, don't ask me how to access that. <laughs> It's probably on the website. Yeah. Oh, it is on the website. I remember. Okay. Uh, it's probably mm -hmm. under events on the on the jctnsuffrage.org mm -hmm. website. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We may have to link that to us. Yeah. yeah. But one thing good about the QR code on the kiosk is there's a whole lot more, especially African American women that okay. uh, that were uh, that were involved. Um, were there a lot of men involved? 
I mean, there's I'm a couple sure. of men on Well, here. you know, there was ha- there was <laughs> Harry Byrne that <laughs> there was Harry Byrne that did yeah. the boat. <laughs> well, and I know when they did the actual parade, the, the mountain home. Well, yeah, yeah and Paul the, Devine was with his the wife. The men got yeah. involved and walked in the parade. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do we think they were supportive? That would have to oh, be there were so men yes. that were supportive. Yeah. I mean, there's no doubt about it. Yeah. Uh, there, there were men that were su- supportive. There had to be because the laws wouldn't have gotten passed otherwise. There was no. Yeah, way I mean, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> and do you think your grandfather was supportive of your grandmother? Do you know? I'm sure he was. Yeah. If he good. wasn't, that's... He's well, he sounded club. like he yeah. was important, too. Yeah, so I so think he would he was, have. like, yeah. mm-hmm. embarrassed or something, he yeah. would have said something. I think Tom, if Tom researched, I think he would have yeah. found something. But, yeah, but she probably was, you know, like, if you don't support me, that's fine. <laughs> Yeah. I'm going through with this. <laughs> with what she did. Yeah. yeah. She did her right. That's right. On my horse. <laughs> <laughs> what horse? Yes. Yeah. Beautiful. Oh, I would love to have like lunch with her. I yeah. know. Oh, I know. Yeah. I know. Wouldn't that be great, guys? I'd I just, love to have lunch with her. I just love Yeah. Her. I love I would love to have known her and just have grown up with her. Yeah. But it's so, really neat learning the history. Uh, I've got, uh, she was born in 1883 and died in 1965. Wow. Mm-hmm. I mean, 80, 80. she was born in mm-hmm. 1883 83. and 19, died in 1965. She was 82. So she was around. Yeah, I was five. Mm-hmm. Yeah. See, I was, yeah, I'm just mm-hmm. getting ready to yeah. turn six. But I believe she was ill. While we were in Germany, and then when we came back, I think she was in, and I think Tom had told me he'd researched what hospital she was in up in Washington, D.C., and okay. was in the hospital and then passed when I was six. And we were, at that time, we'd moved to Johnson City. I grew up on Unaka. Mm. Yeah. But I wish I'd have known her. It's really. Yeah. It was just wonderful, this, you all getting together over brunch and discussing <laughs> What, you know. It changed your life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's yeah. Really neat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We need to do something. What are we going to do? Let's have a parade, right? Well, we didn't get that. <laughs> but we did a lot. So, yes. Yeah. It was fun. Isn't I think fun? in this whole process, your story, yeah. I, know. I, I tear up every time. Oh. Yeah. Uh, you just don't get that often. You mm-hmm. just don't get that. Yeah. And oh, that's that's the beauty of it. That's amazing. Oh, it my is. goodness. That's mm-hmm. the beauty of it. That is a book. Are you writing a book? No. <laughs> <laughs> we need to get to Elaine Weiss. Oh to- yes. <laughs> Well, well, the story of Johnson you, City. But if you just keep doing things like this mm-hmm. and telling that story, mm-hmm. you know, that gets passed on and, you know, your kids know it. Know. They went to see the exhibit and yes. said, that's my relative. Yes. You know, that. He was truly blown away. Yeah. That's really to cool. see that. Isn't that great? He said, that's my great grandmother. Yeah. And I would be telling everyone. Yeah. I'd be like, oh, oh you know that exhibit down the street? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you, know that, you know that marker on East Tolston? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Well, we've already been talking for 56 minutes, so we usually wrap up after about an hour, but this is about the time where we say, do you have questions for each other? Do you have final words? Do you want to share anything? I'm just so glad that Tom Roberts reached out to me and I met you and and met so many fabulous women Mm -hmm. and learned the history. Yeah. It's been well, a blessing. And as, as much wonderful history as there is, mm-hmm. I think Michelle's right. The, the sweetest spot in mm-hmm. it is finding you. Oh, yes. I cried up. I cried when they revealed the marker. I think about it now, I want to cry. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so it was amazing. Marker's very special. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I haven't the Johnson seen that, City. but, but I'm, I'm going to see oh, it. Oh, go see it. What's the address? 611 East Holston. East Holston. Mm-hmm. I've gone by the mural several times. Friends will come to town. I'm like, okay, you got to see this. Oh, I know. Mm-hmm. So I'll take them by and, and just just to stand by. Of course, they're doing construction on the road, but it's something. But I, I've got it's to beautiful. see that marble marker. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. I want to do that. It's really that. sweet. Tom Roberts was instrumental in you getting know, that as well. Mm-hmm. We got to have Tom on. Tom. Yeah. 
You know, he was the only guy in the entire committee. <laughs> he was. The coalition. The coalition. Yeah. He was. And he mm -hmm. just brought it all in. Mm -hmm. He did. Again, I don't know how he does this. He, I don't either. What does he there. do? I don't know. Is this he man is the, he's he's the king of Google. <laughs> he's, well, he's employed. I mean, yeah. he is employed, but, I, you know, to tell you the truth, I, I'm not sure what Tom does, but he was working remote in Florida. So I'm, I'm And he loves working. being a historian. He does. He, that's what he Clearly. loves. Yes. He would love to be... There's not one, I don't think, but he'd love to be like the Johnson City historian. My yeah, husband thought Johnson. it was a prank call when he called because he said, I'm looking for any descendant of Eliza Sharp White. And he said, well, you'll have to call back and talk to Stacy." And my husband said, I, it might be a prank call. <laughs> I said, that's my grandmother. <laughs> It'd have to be somebody and then I'm you. thinking, why is someone calling me about her? Right. And then... It was amazing. <laughs> I just can't even imagine. <laughs> Terry said, Tom, Tom was, I, I saw him, I guess, near the, oh, near the middle or the end of the fall last year. And again, you just sit in and talk with him, and he yes. just goes, Oh, but he, he reached so much. out to me after meeting yeah. for this, and he goes, Michelle, I was on eBay. This is a story I bring in. He goes, I was on eBay and I purchased a bunch of postcards from Johnson City. Now, number one, mm -hmm. Of all the world of eBay, how are you going to find black and white postcards of black people mm -hmm. in Johnson City? He oh, can find it. Tom and he found, found, it. found it. And mm -hmm. he bought them. He mm -hmm. called, he's like, I want all of these. Bought them. Mm -hmm. I have pictures in my phone now. It's like people that lived in Johnson City. He's like, okay, first of all, if you are a black family in Johnson City and you are sitting for a photograph, yeah. you have to be wealthy. You've got to have yeah. some money on you. Mm -hmm. And here's another whole story that Tom we don't have and it. Adam at, at Langston are trying to put this together. Yeah. He starts looking at faces. He's got some names on the back. Mm -hmm. Click, 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 click. He's going in obituaries. He's got, you know, marriage things. He's got, oh, that's great. Mm -hmm. He can he find can find it. amazing. Yeah. Such well, you know, uh, Bertha Ellis, he found information on her. Yes. She mm -hmm. had gone to Langston to school oh, wow. and was the... Uh, principal at Douglas okay yeah and so he found out all about her you know mm -hmm. through the, through wow. uh, his research just he's amazing amazing really yeah. just amazing I mm -hmm. didn't know any of this and it's like incredibly empowering just like okay these ladies in the 1800s wow I feel like more women need to know these stories because it, it empowers you. Yes. Yeah. We may have to do something for Asian History Month. Yeah. And, and mm -hmm. just yeah, Native American History Month. Yeah. And just bring these 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 women. Yeah, because the because the ones that are depicted there, you know, Mabel, uh, Hua, Ping, Li, mm -hmm. Zitkala Sky. Um, Zitkala Sa, I should say. Um, there's more than them. Right. That was doing this. I yeah. mean, there's a story behind each one of them. Yeah. So, yeah. That'd be great. I, I like that idea of having a um, book study with that book. Uh-huh. Yeah. I'm in a book group that we're reading it this month. Oh, you are? Yeah. 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 yeah I, I but I've already, I've already read it. It's read it. primo. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It's a great story. Amazing. Great. Yeah. This is this was fantastic. I told you. Yes. Two questions. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you for yeah. having us. Thank you for yes. doing this. It's a great Women's great. History Month yes. Uh, yes. subject matter. Yes. Yeah. Now, one last question. Okay. Of my 16. <laughs> so when we go to the website, uh -huh. if there are a group of high school kids who want to learn about women in Tennessee history, is there enough information on the website to do that? Or am I thinking this needs to be a curriculum that can be organized and then added to the website? Click here for ABC state mm -hmm. standards for mm -hmm. history, women's history, yeah. whatever it might be. There's not that on the website. I think the most detailed information on uh, on the women is on the QR code, QR code at the at kiosk. The, gotcha. Okay. That's, that's mm -hmm. the most detailed thing that you would find. Uh, gosh, somebody 
In fact, if, if there's like a, a doctoral candidate at ETSU yes. or somebody in media or something like that that's looking for a master's degree project, it would be a great project. Oh, yeah. yeah, women's history, yeah. American mm-hmm. history. Yeah. Um, a lot of the AP high school kids do right. capstone projects. This would be wonderful. This would be a wonderful mm-hmm. project. It because, no, that's not yeah. that curriculum is not there with the standards and mm-hmm. everything you need. That would be great. All right. So, is there going to be a reunion of the coalition? Oh, that's a good get question. Together. Well, let's see. In a hundred years, <laughs> <laughs> we won't be here. <laughs> we'll be talking about Lisa. <laughs> oh, yeah. no, they'll be talking about me. I know. Yeah, we were talking about. I wish I could sit down with these women, which I agree. Mm-hmm. But I'm like. You're kind of sitting down with the women who are a little bit doing it now. Yes. You're carrying yeah. on the legacy. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. And, I, you know, I said Alice Paul was my uh, hero out of the whole thing. She was still alive when I was in high school. I mean, I could have... I could have met her. Mm-hmm. You know, I could have met her. Yeah. It's like I missed that because I didn't know. Mm-mm. You just don't care about the right stuff when you're. I know. Well, in high school, wasn't yeah. 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 Oh, true. Wow. Amazing. Yes. Thank what are the best? You know, what is the so best? Much. Thank this you. Has been yeah. incredible. Yeah. 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 Thank you for having us. Yeah.